I'm now going to show you the process of how I built my most recent iteration of the multiplane camera system. A local university has hired me to build this iconic tool for their students to practice animation on, as well as hopefully make some films with. Now I've designed something that lies somewhere in the middle of Lode Reiniger's more accessible designs from 1926 with Bill Garrity's more sophisticated design from 1937. I first drew up some designs inspired by Bill Garrity's work. And then the client and myself worked out a few changes to make their version easier to use for just one person instead of a whole team. This meant moving the linear actuator the camera sits on from the back of the multiplane to the front, as well as additional accessibility adjustments. I'm jumping right in by cutting some 3 4 inch plywood. These pieces will form the frames where the plexiglass will sit for the animators to work their magic. I center the plexiglass, grab my trusty speed square, and make sure the measurements are even on all sides. Then, I mark where the interior shelf will go to give the plexi a nice place to rest. It's time to take these 4x4 four four posts and lock them in square, so I can carve out some channels with my trusty hand router. This step ensures a rock solid frame, and locking them together means these channels will line up perfectly on all four posts. I carve two channels at the top, one at the bottom, nothing too fancy yet. Now, I mark the spot for the T-track, which will sit flush with the surface, speed square to the rescue again, and I mark all the way down. Then I lock my router to a detachable guide and go to town. Here I'm dry fitting the T-track and testing the hardware. Once it looks good, I move on to cutting the remaining channels. I realign the posts to create one more channel, making it easier to add or remove light fixtures later. A quick sanding to smooth out the edges, and now it's time for the frames. Again, I use the hand router to cut out a perfect center square, leaving a solid frame. Next. I use a rabbit bit to carve out a quarter inch shelf around the interior edges for the acrylic to sit snugly. If I did my math right, the acrylic should fit perfectly. Next I build a support frame to beef up the structure and give the T-bolt space to fit in the T-track. Then comes the highlight of every project, hours of sanding. Once everything's smooth, I assemble the posts into their permanent frame using square clamps to keep everything aligned. With that done, it's assembly time. I use square clamps to lock the posts in place, keeping everything perfectly square. The channels are paying off. Things are looking solid. But, plot twist, I discover my workshop floor isn't level. Yikes. Before I can proceed, I need to lay down plywood and shims to get everything leveled out. Thankfully, it's not rocket science, just a lot of measuring, adjusting, and leveling until everything's good to go. Now that the floor is flat, I dry fit the outer frame with clamps and test one of the plexiglass frames. Surprise, new problem. If there's any imbalance in the frame, it locks up like a rusty old gate. After some tinkering, and a bit of head scratching, I adjust my measurements, square things off, and create more space for the frame to move freely. I grabbed a linear actuator off Amazon, normally used for CNC machines, to make the camera glide up and down in smooth, lockable measurements. I head back to the actuator to assemble an extension arm for the camera. After a few test runs, I mount it on top of the actuator, and I've gotta say, watching that arm slide back and forth is pretty satisfying. I also buy a steel L bracket to give the camera more flexibility 
in positioning. Off camera, we paint everything black and start installing the T-Track. And there it is, the entire structure, painted and assembled. We fix the T-Track problem by crafting our own custom T-bolts with smaller, removable flat heads. While my buddy Aaron handles the wiring, I peel off the protective film so we can admire the acrylic in place. All the housings for the lights, with adjustable barn doors, were built off-camera. They slide right on thanks to the exterior T-tracks. Pretty fancy. Since I know absolutely nothing about lighting, electronics, or DMX, I called an errand to do all the lighting and wiring. Thankfully, modern tech helps us control all eight lights individually through the DragonFrame animation software. All right. Here we are at Biola University where we have dropped off the multiplane that we built for them. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take the silhouettes and the backgrounds and things that we made for them and we're going to put them up and see what we can do. First, I lay down a sheet of vellum paper to diffuse the background. Then, Aaron and I adjust the lights, position everything at the right distance from the camera, and finalize the staging. Using DragonFrame, we're able to see the shot in real time and tweak the framing until everything looks perfect. Thank you so much for checking this video out. I hope it has inspired you to make your own multiplane camera system. We as a community have to do everything that we can to keep original animation techniques alive. Thank you.